So the other week I revisited my tapping arm, making a new version more in line with my current design goals. I ended the video explaining why I ditched the complicated work holding solutions and saying that I wouldn't revisit it for a while. Anyways, let's revisit it and make a complicated work holding solution. I've wanted to make a magnetic chuck for years now, and actually bought the magnets to do so all the way back in 2021. Bloody hell, it's possible getting work done on these roads. Yeah. Can you believe we paid tax for this? <laughs> I had held off because I couldn't think of a practical use for one, but here on the tapping arm it might be just what I need. I moved forward with creating a quick prototype. Put very simply, I would need two rings of magnets with the poles facing into some sort of ferrous core. Rotating these two rings against each other would invert the position of the poles and cause the magnetic force to flow either in or out of the chuck. It was very difficult to switch states and I had to use a battery to lock it open. But seeing that the switching worked and that the force it output was good, I felt confident moving forward. Just. The actual build begins with some printed parts. Taking the lower ring first, I start putting the magnets in place. You can see me making sure to get the correct polarities. You want the same poles facing each other, and remembering that opposites attract, this made checking the orientation easy. It's uh, also advisable to install the nuts as you install the magnets to keep stuff from escaping. Next, one nut is pushed out of its housing to align this spacer piece, allowing the rest of the nuts to be pushed flush with the spacer. I use some tape to hold the magnets in place, so the whole assembly can be bolted into the bed of the tapping arm. Following this, we repeat the process of magnets and nuts in the upper face. Using these outer wings, the whole assembly can be installed on top of the base. Finally, a single M8 bolt is used to hold both sides in position. I was mostly pleased with this result. The guides in the base ensured it actually locked quite easily between the two states, which was something I was worried about. Maybe I should lock these nuts down somehow, but they can't escape and it's kind of fun to watch them pop up and down. Doing some scientific testing, I could see it had more than enough force to hold the vise while tapping. However, there was uh, one small issue. The vise is too tall. I had the choice of smaller vise or smaller chuck, and opted for the solution that didn't involve waiting for stuff in the post. This piece of scrap is the basis of the vise. I took some time to clean it up and dry it off. With that done, I glue it into its slot in the base of the vise. The two end caps each have M3 threaded inserts installed. The middle jaw also has a M5 nut press fit into it. With that done, the vise is now ready to use. I mean, if nothing else, this is fun. I feel like I need to state it more clearly, but this system is mostly so I can use really small taps. 
This is an M1 tap, and I could not use it without an arm like this. It would break far too easy. It is so hard to tell if like anything's been cut or not. But I mean, I guess it has. Hmm. Well, there you have it. That is by far the smallest thread I've ever cut. There's a hair for comparison. Overall, I'm happy to finally have tried and found a use for a printed mag switch. Again, this is a very cheap one, like 10 to 15 bucks, depending on if you use food YouTuber pricing or not. It's compatible with the tapping arm and ball vice, but you could screw it onto anything. I'm sure there are at least a few things it could be used for. Thank you to my patrons, and to you, as always, for watching. <laughs>